Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our live market analysis USA edition. My name is Carl Kaplinga. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets, and it's a pleasure to be with you as we delve into US markets and try and find some winners for your portfolio after what has been a tumultuous, tumultuous week, tumultuous week in markets. Hashtag banking crisis. Anyone, you know the format of these presentations. Simple as it can get. Q and A from you. Charts, analysis, company valuations from me. Anything you want to talk about on the US markets. And uh, let's get started with the first request that has come through. Pretty sensible one. Credit Suisse from David. Uh, now, there's a few ways to uh, slice and dice this. That's uh, meta. We'll get back to that in a little while. So um, I do know it's listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, and I just need to figure out what the code is here. And I can find it everywhere else. Uh, so I'm not seeing it. Actually, if I do that, I might. I'm pretty sure it's CS here, isn't it? And seeing so, you know, mm, I can I can find it somewhere else. Don't worry. We'll, we'll head over here. And uh, and I'll go to here, and you'll see a different uh, charting package pop up, and I can just go CS, and we can see Credit Swiss Group. I'm not sure why it didn't pop up on the other one. I know it's an ADR. Maybe that's got something to do with it, but anyway, we're going to get the chart pretty quickly. And it's not a great looking chart, is it? You can see, uh, well, top left, bottom right. I had to think about it because it's the opposite of what I typically like, which is bottom left, top right. So I need to see a good long-term trend in place. And I know a lot of people find this very boring. They say, hey, Carl, why can't I buy stuff in downtrends like this? Surely it must be cheap. Surely I can buy um, something at $2. It's a, it's, you know, it's, it's a big bank in Europe. It'll eventually it'll go back up to where it started, which if you zoom out, Carl, you can see it was 15 not that long ago. And if we keep going back to pre-GFC, it probably was, you know, 100 US dollars a share. In fact, it wasn't that far off it, was it, pre-GFC. Uh, and, and other people say, hey, this Credit Suisse thing, that really took me by surprise. And I say, well, <laughs> really? Uh, this thing has been going under, we switch to the weekly chart, <laughs> it's very clear here on the long-term trend. This thing has been going under for about 13 years, or well, it's about 15 years really since the GFC, but it's been in a long-term downtrend for about 13 of those 15 years and never really looked to challenge that long-term downtrend on the weekly chart. And that's another good plug for the weekly chart. It'll it'll um, dial down some of that volatility and noise in the short term and give you a better view of what's going on. Um, so anyway, there, there's been no reason to buy this for, for many, many years. And I'm going to reiterate that today. And some people say, oh, look, you know, there's a bargain there. And I say, that's not my style. It doesn't mean, look, I can't, it's not that I can't buy stuff in downtrends. It just, I have to see some good stuff happening first, okay? So that candle is impressive. Big white candle indicates demand coming to the system. Happened on huge volatility, daily volatility, and huge volume. So, you know, tick, tick, tick. There's three ticks in the box for that being potentially the major low for Credit Suisse. So, you know, look, we're part of the way there. To go for a cheeky buy, and that's all it really is here. Kamikaze buy given the long-term trend. I need to see at least, and we saw um, it close off its highs yesterday. So even that was probably flat for the session, that really is a supply side session. Okay, that is supply coming back in, taking control of prices near the bottom of that last point of demand, now acting as a point of supply. So that is, the supply is manifesting itself in the market, despite the fact that we've gone tick, tick, tick in these three columns, okay? So what do we need to see? Well, we've got some supply coming in, that's good. Now we can test the demand that's in the system. We're gonna test the metal of the demand that has so far shown itself. And if we start to see some higher troughs coming in, right? And maybe even you wanna be a little bit more conservative. See how we do, you can push in, there's a little peak there, tiny peak there, push into that, and a little pullback here, and then, through here. And you say, well, that's too much, Carl. I can, you know, I, I, I like shiny things that are moving very quickly. <laughs> you know, I can't wait for that. I'm, I don't have the patience. Say, well, that's up to you. But, you know, this is what I'd prefer to see. Um, I probably wouldn't even be brave enough to buy just on the first uh, higher trough here, uh, even with the right candles. I probably want to see a little bit more price action. And we're kind of building a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders pattern, that classic uh, technical analysis pattern there. Uh, now, what sort of candles do we want to see in and around this zone here? 
So the zone I'm talking about is here. If you're a bit more conservative like me, or if you're really brave, you might even uh, wait for the right candle sort of in that zone there. And I don't think I can actually draw it very well here. So I might just flick back to where I can draw it very well, which is over here. And uh, yeah, just reading, couldn't find the CS in there. It doesn't matter. Well, if I go here and try it again, I'm still not going to find it, am I? No. Okay, so the candle I'm looking to draw, uh, the candles I'm looking to find in there, and you know the, the drill here, everyone. Let me go here, 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 and here. So if I see this candle or its best friend, which is this candle here, uh, at either of those higher troughs, those higher points of demand, uh, then I might start to get interested. Okay, these are our demand side candles, our demand buddies. And if we head back here, uh, I want to see them in what appears for the second to be uh, the, the, the pink zones. And uh, they're gonna, I'm going to change change the color so they're, uh, they're green. And oh, let's do that one. And go enter. Yes, okay. And this one here, let's do the same. And change the color because we're going to, going to say that these are the uh, demand zones that we want to see. And if I was to be so bold as to label this thing, I'd say, well, here's an old point, point of supply. Right, there's a little point of demand in there and these will all shift around and make sense in a second. <laughs> Trust me. As you can see, still getting the hang of this platform here, drawing on this one. I think I'm doing pretty well, actually, if I say so myself. Uh, so if you look at this little pod there, pod there, and potentially a POS there. So if you see, you know, we've got one pod, let's see at least another pod, those demand side buddies in that green zone. Or if you're a bit more conservative, you might even wait for that inverted head and shoulders pattern to form after a test of that. Uh, point of supply because let's face it we haven't taken out a lot of uh, many previous points of supply I, I think i've kind of got to the heart of your question i think david if that's what you're after i mean I'm, i know you're not short so i know you're not thinking of where do i cover back my credit swiss <laughs> position um, or maybe you're looking at it from well you know is, is this one of those key risk factors in the markets that i don't need to worry so much about anymore and yeah look the the candles at least suggest that it's less of a worry today than it was um, even just a few sessions ago Okay, let's uh, go for the next one, which uh, sounds pretty sweet to me for Perry. And uh, we're going to type in, in here, we're going to go HSY, which is Hershey Co. Oh, wow. Sweet as anything. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty straightforward on this one. So let's uh, just type in straight away. Let's just go plus one over three and say this. There's nothing in this chart I don't like, actually. It's uh, it's just doing everything I want to see. So this, this short-term uptrend, long-term uptrend, 21.34 EMAs, 144.233 EMAs. Now, I've got a traffic light system where green is go, orange is look, just be a little bit careful. Think about maybe, you know, think about being really uh, strict on your, on the trade that you've got. Think about, you know, finding points where you can lighten the load uh, and then red, or pink, dark pink, which we probably won't see it for a while on this one, because it's been such a good performer, would be stay out of the market. Okay. Uh, so that looks great. The, the candles, so if we're looking at one, two, three, four, the last four candles, I know the NASDAQ's had four good candles, uh, but pretty happy with that. And the fact that it, look, it hasn't blasted through is okay, because it's one of those defensive companies that while the NASDAQ's been melting down for everything else in this chart, you know, it, it, it's done well. And, and that's that's shown here, and they're, and they're just this wonderful, wonderful relative strength as well. So yeah, it's, it's closed above this peak high here. That high there is uh, 244.38 and convincing. So yeah, no issues at all. Adding some risk to that one for you, Perry. Well done, actually, on picking that out. I, I like your eye. Now, having said that, this could be the worst performing stock for the ne next 12 months. I don't know the future. I can't see the future. All I can say is that despite all of the you-know-what going on in the world and the you-know-what is not just going on, it's been hitting the fan and the fan has been distributing the you-know-what everywhere over the last few weeks and months, really. This thing has been rock solid. So what does that tell you? 
about the quality of the earnings within this company. Hey, that's a nice segue to check the quality of earnings in this company. So what I can do over here in my Refinitiv Icon spreadsheet, which comes from Thomson Reuters, one of the world's preeminent uh, financial data providers, is type that code in HSY, and we'll get a bit of an understanding of what the brokers think about this company. And we have plenty of coverage. 19 brokers are covering it, their highest price target. So they've done all the research. This is not my research. This is the broker research. They've done the research. One of them said, hey, 280 is my target. Uh, some of them said some stuff in between and 222 is the low, but the average target is 253, which interestingly doesn't provide that much upside. That is interesting. Uh, in terms of their ratings, we've got two strong buys, five buys, 14 holds, and one sell. I can't see that in the charts, whoever the seller is. Next place I head down, there's plenty of information here, obviously historical information, stuff that's in the bag, and then we've got consensus estimates. So the brokers will go through and give Thomson Reuters what they think the revenue is going to be for just, uh, up year ending December 2023, right? And then they'll give uh, their numbers for the next few years and all the other metrics and Thomson Reuters collate that data together. So what we're getting here is not just the thoughts and feelings and the interpretation of all that global macro from one broker, but 19 brokers. And you could go and do that work yourself and I encourage you to do it. <laughs> not really, it'd be a complete waste of your time because no matter what number you come up with, I guarantee A, it probably wouldn't be as good as their number and B, who cares what your number is? You don't move the market these guys do. So I think there's a lot of value in using numbers like this. Anyway, the next place I go is EPS line. I want to see bottom left, top right. I want to see, you know, solid, steady growth through all sorts of market conditions. And that kind of assumes that the last five years has had all sorts of market conditions. Guess what? The last five years has had all sorts of market conditions. We've had everything thrown at us in the last five years, including a global pandemic. And it didn't matter. People still wanted Hershey's products. Uh, then I go, well, what do the brokers say going forward? And it still looks pretty good, actually, although a little bit slower on the growth rate and then actually coming off a little bit in December 2026. And I don't know why. And honestly, I couldn't care less. I'm sure the brokers have done the work on that. But what it does, that minus seven does uh, just bring down the compound annual growth rate looking out to FY26 to just 2%, which is below the market's average. Okay, The market average growth over that period is probably going to be somewhere in about 7 or 8%. And the typical market PE is about 15 so you can see why, based upon these estimates, the brokers aren't as you know sort of crazy bullish on this. They're saying, well, you know, it's about fully valued around the current price, and I would tend to agree with them, okay, but purely based upon these numbers, because at the moment their um, their median forecast PE is twenty four point six, okay, so the median of that. Uh, historically, they've paid far more than that. Okay, so if we're, I go historical, they've been happy to pay 39 times earnings. That's pretty substantial. Now, we don't live in the past, we live in the future, so I prefer to skew more to this one. But what I can say is that that is a very high hurdle rate for Hershey, given what brokers have been comfortable in paying in the past. So maybe there's the ability to massage, massage that a little higher, okay, and say, well, we could say 26 is more reasonable. It's, it's a more immediate PE that the market is assuming. And I'll, let, I'll, look, I'll show it to you, but I'm not going to base my, uh, my next sentence on it. Okay, so if we get to that, it's still a little bit overvalued. I'm going to say that look, I'm happy to go with the forecast median. Um, I do think it is probably on the cheap side, but I don't think it's going to get this back to a point where it's screaming great value. So is this a red flag for me on the chart? No, I don't think so. There's your answer. I don't think it's a red flag for me on the chart. Um, you know, either either you're committed to your technicals and your trends or not. And I would say to you that um, you know whatever the brokers are saying, uh, they're not doing. They're still very positive towards this. They're, they're still buying it. So yeah, no, my my view hasn't changed. I'm still adding some risk on Hershey. Okay, Perry's got another quite a quite good one here. Let's see if that's the case. That is a great one. Arista Networks, A-N-E-T. Uh, and look, I'm guessing, Perry, you've probably already um, added some risk here. Uh, I'm hoping you have anyway. And if you haven't, then I'm not sure I want to add some risk right now. And you say, hey, Carl, that doesn't make sense. And I, and I know I get it. It's just, I want to add some risk at some stage, just not right now. It's just, it's just gotten itself too far away from my light green zone. So I like to buy things 
in and around the light green zone when the right candle appears. For example, that's the right candle, rising peaks through here, um, nice trends. So it's around here, it's around 140 that I go plus one third. Even this little candle here, that pullback, I could even contemplate going plus one third, maybe even this candle here. But it's I, I get to a point where I go, hmm, it's gotten away from me. And there's so many stocks out there in the US. I'm sure I'm going to find another one that is a bit closer to the light green zone, doing all the same good stuff that Ar Arista's doing. So if you've got it, hold it. And this is where I know it's going to be maybe sound like I'm conflicting myself because I'm saying hold it. If you've got it, hold it. There's absolutely no reason to sell it based upon that chart. And most people say, oh, I can't. Wait. Oh, that's gone way up. You should sell that straight away. Yeah, yeah, sell it. It's gone up. And I say, no, no, no. There's no. The market is not scared. You might be scared, but who cares what you think? Nobody cares what you think. Um, the market, yeah, there's a little bit of selling. There's a little bit of supply came in there, but otherwise, overwhelming, overwhelming demand, I'd suggest to you, excess demand in the system. So if you've got it, uh, Perry, hopefully you do, uh, hanging on there, and you know what candles you want to watch out for, the, the nasty ones, if you're long, the ones you don't want to see, the supply side buddies. Okay, so if we start to see stuff like this, or that candle's best friend, partner in crime, is the one that looks like that. Uh, and that is our supply, supply side buddies. And um, what can we say about this? Uh, the supply, supplies, uh, overwhelming demand, excess supply, excess supply in a system. And if you see those popping in somewhere up there or beyond, that's when you might start to uh, manage your exit. Uh, but looks great. Uh, Haraju's got Arlo Technologies. Let's have a look at that one. A-R-L-O. Uh, looks good too. Let me zoom. So, so the risky here is I go, oh, that looks great. And I start putting on all my uh, all my my annotations and I get my trade ready on my platform. And then I zoom out uh, or I don't, or I forget to zoom out and I, I, I miss something that I should have seen. For example, I might miss a, a big previous point of supply which could really negatively impact my reward to risk on this trade. So for example, let's say I'm looking to go long at the orange line, okay, which is here, uh, or could be a little bit lower, and I'm looking to set my stop loss at the red line, which is underneath the point of demand down there. Uh, but it's not going to actually impact my reward to risk because I think my reward to risk is still actually pretty good. So that's okay there. But if I didn't zoom out, I wouldn't know, would I? I wouldn't be able to tell that I've still got at least one-to-one -one reward to risk on this trade. Um, can you add some risk here? Oh, yeah, look, I think you can. I don't think there's anything really awful in the chart to the upside. And it's it's uh, it's one of those turnaround plays, Haraju, isn't it? So we've got the short-term uptrend clearly established. This candle here is the game changer. Uh, so once you, when you see these candles, you, you would do well to pay very close attention. So this one here. And... Uh, this is the, uh, we'll, we'll say this, um, massive demand event. Okay. Uh, it's really a sort of a change of thinking. It, it's it's pivotal. You know, it is really pivotal. 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 Uh, and, yeah, I don't think you want to, if you're in shorts, you don't want to muck around with that. But if you are not in shorts, you're looking for longs, then um, even adding some risk just on that is probably not a crazy idea. But certainly looking for um, how the market responds after that. Shallow pullbacks after big candles like that are a no-brainer. Sh shallow pullbacks after a candle like that are a no-brainer. And the opposite of this, let me see if I can find it. And I wish I, wish I could find it very easily. Look, it's something very similar to that. Um, certainly, just change the color, it's easy to see. I mean, that's not great, but I want to find the big one, right? Ah, that's the big one. Uh, so, you know, we'll blend those two together, and they are the big one as well, aren't they? So, it's the candle, it's a big black candle, stands out like you know what. And you can see what happens after them. And I challenge you, I challenge everybody listening to go back and do the homework on any chart and do it on many charts. And you'll find that when you see uh, the big ones, the big black candles, it is equal and oppositely a change, a pivotal change in thinking the other way. It kills uptrends. We say these are 
um, you know, uh, species ending events, right? The meteor hitting the dinosaurs. Massive supply side signals, right? Again, pivotal change in thinking about the future prospects of this stock's earnings, okay? And it doesn't matter what you think, again, because you're thinking you might have been, I oh, know this thing's going to keep going up, right? It's still pretty much bottom left, top right, but it's what the market thinks that matters. And I say, as soon as you see these big species ending events, you don't ask questions. You just start lopping off risk, right? You just start lopping off risk. You just start lopping off risk, right? You just go, yep, not going to ask too many questions here, just lopping off risk, okay? Now, if that's our thinking on the downside, right? Um, why shouldn't our thinking on the upside be the same when we see these big demand candles? And I know the natural response is, when I look at this, and, and many people will do this because it's been going down for so long and it's been so bad for so long, many people will say, oh, oh, that's it, that's my opportunity to get out. Finally, it's gone back up again and I can get out. Uh, or many people will say, you know, it's, it's still a terrible company. Again, you're not thinking like the market. Okay, so pay attention to these. They're very, very important. Uh, and when you get shallow pullback, and this didn't even pull back, it, it actually just logged in another day, All <laughs> right? Shallow pullback through here. We are seeing some supply in here. So there's, uh, you know, I would not, I'm not necessarily run out and, 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 and buy it, but let's see if we can um, deal with this supply. I think we will, because I think that the balance of probability suggests demand is, is meaningful. Demand means business here. Uh, and you might get another candle in and around here. That just gives you enough confidence to add a third. But we're close to adding risk on this one. Very, very close. Um, but just a great case study, Haraji. Well done. Thanks for bringing that one to my attention. And the other thing is, it's worth mentioning that this is very much our turnaround play, isn't it? Turnaround play. We've got the two setups. We've got the Hershey play, that bottom left, top right. And then we've got the one that is attempting to, to turn its long-term trend around. And the requirements for doing that is dealing with the long-term trend, getting above it, and then coming back and testing and holding it and moving off it, right? That's what we're looking for. So I'm not a person that says, oh, you can't buy stocks that have dipped. I'm saying, yes, we can buy stocks that have dipped, but only after we've got sufficient evidence that the market believes that the future prospects of the stock's earnings have changed. And it's a really good message now, isn't it? Because there's, we're going to find a bunch of stocks after the recent correction that have dipped, and we're going to have to ask our questions. Well, ask ourselves the question: Is it time to buy or not? So that's uh, that's a good message to have. Now I've got plenty of people in session today uh, that haven't asked asked a question yet. I know a lot of people just come in just to observe, but uh, look, there must be a US stock you're interested in for me to talk about. I might head back to Meta because it was one we've talked about I think every week for the last few weeks. And if you look back at what we said, it's one of those uh, great case studies of a turnaround play. And even despite the recent carnage in the market, it actually held up pretty well. Uh, and you can see I've, I've drawn all over this one. I might get rid of that. And I want to see the candles in there. But you can see uh, beneath here, we were saying lighten our load. Okay, go back to reducing risk if it breaks down through there. But we can also see that we have been talking about um, as much as, as far ago as two weeks, if we get the right candles, and you can see it played out almost exactly as I predicted, um, adding risk to this one. Uh, and I think really here is another major signal. We talk about what the signals look like, and I think this is the key candle you need to focus on. Okay, um, so for me, when I see that, I'm happy to go plus one third there, and you know. Even really, even this candle, it, it, there's nothing wrong even with going the next day saying, look, everything I think is happening here is happening here. And the market continues to tell me it's whispering in my ear. The market's always, 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 always whispering in your ear. The market's always trying to talk to you. The problem is for most investors, they go through their investing lives like this and like this, ignoring what the market's trying to tell them. Um, I think that looks great. Happy holder here. On Meta, so if you did get on that one, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, still waiting for some other stuff to talk about. In fact, what I can do is uh, we head over here to um, some of these and look at the fundamentals while I'm getting some more requests. So this was the Arista Networks, another nice chart. It had popped quite a bit. Maybe we're looking for a pullback here. 19 brokers 
225 on the high side, 140 on the low for an average target of 167. Again, only 3% on that one. So it's kind of caught up to those price targets. But what you find, see, this is static. So this is what's happening today. We might find, um, because obviously there's been some good news out for Arista, these brokers start to upgrade these price targets and you'll see that change. You might say, oh, yeah, Carl did that a few weeks ago. There's only 3% upside. We come back and we look at it and it's now 13% upside because this is dynamic. This is always changing. Your view of a stock might not change, but these guys are constantly doing the research. Why? Because that's what they're getting paid the big bucks to do. JP Morgan, Citigroup, they've got whole floors, right? Bank of America, whole floors in big gleaming shining office towers somewhere in New York or Chicago, doing the analysis on everything this company releases, and they're changing their ratings, and that gets reported to Thomson Reuters, and you know the, the magic of it all is that we get to see it here. Uh, let us have a look at the ratings, strong by four, by 13, so definitely skew to the upside there, and hold nine. EPS line looks very strong, continued to grow through the pandemic, through the supply chain chaos, and through rampaging inflation and rising costs and costs of living. So it looks like a good one, and we're expecting that to continue. Uh, there's a little bit of a flattening out in earnings. You can see there, again, in FY26 for a minus 1% growth in that year to give us a compound annual growth rate over the look-forward period of 6%. Now I want to see if I'm getting a good deal. Okay, so we can see that the dynamic F or the dynamic median forward-looking PE is 24.3, similar to Hershey's, actually. This is incredibly similar to the last one we looked at. Uh, in terms of what brokers have paid in the past, significantly higher. You know, we can do that by clicking on this 67. Wow, if if they were going to continue to pay those multiples, this thing is ridiculously cheap. But they're probably not, right? I mean, as a business matures and growth starts to sort of moderate, uh, we expect lower PEs. Uh, is that the right PE? I'm going to reiterate what I said on Hershey. It, it does feel a bit low against historical. Um, you could maybe go at 28, and I'll just show you what it is. This is not about me telling you what it is. That's not what how fundamental works, fundamental analysis works. Fundamental analysis is pure guesswork. It's how do I feel about the world today, and therefore how do I change the, change the assumptions in my dirty, great, big, fancy spreadsheet? That's all the brokers are doing. That's how these price targets and ratings are derived. Okay, so my method is very consistent with theirs. How do I feel about this one? Technical analysis is not about how we feel. It's about we are. It's about reading the demand and supply that is evident in the market and drawing conclusions based upon that and the highest probability uh, path forward. Anyway, if I went twenty eight, uh, it, it, it probably matches the brokers, um, but you know I'm happy to also just leave it there and say, look, I don't think it's a screaming bargain here. Uh, and the other one there was Arlo which is A-R-L-O. This one was for Haraju. And we don't have a lot of coverage on this one, interestingly. Only the four brokers covering. We've got an $11 high, $8 low average. Actually, $9.50 looks uh, like a bit of upside there. Four buys and nothing else. Uh, EPS line, so it's not actually making money yet, but it looks uh, to, to commence doing that in the current financial year, which will end, obviously, at the end of uh, 20, uh, December 2023, uh, and then some some substantial growth from there, so it's 185%, but we don't have a lot of um, forward estimates. So we'd start to automatically start to ratchet, ratchet this up, wouldn't we? And say, well, what is my confidence in the estimates? Uh, and, you know, we, we I'll let you pick. I'm just showing you what the difference is. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is, this is actually very reasonable for a company growing its, its, um, its earnings at that rate. Uh, so... Yeah, this would suggest that the stock is uh, exponentially, crazily cheap. And I'm going to say that uh, given the, the lack of data here, uh, that the spreadsheet is somewhat broken. Uh, but we can defer to the brokers, if anything, and say um, they still think it's pretty cheap there, all four of them. Okay, let's head back to the charts and look for this code here, which is a new one to me, DCFC. Uh, the Tritum DCFC Equity Warrant. Okay, well, that's actually, we're going to get the actual thing here. Here we go. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stock. That was a warrant. This is a stock. Uh, I'll zoom back out again. This one from Jimmy. They are a BNE-based company in EV charging. Okay, oh, so Brisbane-based. Uh, so it's a company based in Australia, but listed in America, it seems, if Jimmy's information is correct. And I'll let you check that because I believe him. It doesn't look great, let's face it, Jimmy. It's not one you know that 
I'm going to tell you to buy, right? You, you know my system. Uh, this is still down. This is still down. The candles look pretty horrible. The price action looks awful. And by the way, the market's had four days of pretty solid rally. And this has done next to nothing. Uh, so I'm going to say I can't buy it at this stage. But Jimmy, you know the stuff I need to see to change my mind. High peaks, high troughs, demand side buddies. At least the short-term trend turning up. I don't mind buying before the long-term trend turns up. I call it my kamikaze trades. They're definitely higher risk, but I'm only adding a little bit of risk as well, right? I'm only going plus a third, putting a toe in the water. I'm not jumping all the way in. <laughs> Actually, I saw, should I show it? I probably, no, uh, should I show it? Should I show it? Uh, I will show it. Uh, I have to go here, here. Uh, I'm sure you will follow me on Twitter. Uh, but I bookmarked something today. You've, you've probably seen it. Uh, if I go here, bookmarks, uh, and I think it's relevant. <laughs> I think it's relevant, right? This uh, top one here is exactly why we don't go all in on these turnaround plays, right? This is exactly why we just dip a toe in the water, ladies and gentlemen, right? Something that's been in a downtrend, for many, many months, black candles, lower peaks, lower troughs. If we see the right signs that demand is coming back in, that the market is starting to think differently about this company that we're interested in, we're only going to enter a little bit at the start because we don't know what's lurking beneath the surface. And uh, much, uh, I think this girl's making a mistake. She was about to jump the whole lot in, right? And that would have been very dangerous. Uh, so a little bit of a, 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 an interlude there. Let us head back to the charts, the all-important charts. And have a look at Amazon from Mark. Absolutely. Get over here. Back to AMZN. Okay, great segue, isn't it? A great segue. A stock that has been struggling. More in line with the rest of the market because you can see on the relative performance, it's been flip-flopping from outperformance to, let's face it, for the most part, underperformance over the last six months or so. It's just popped back into outperformance and it's actually logged some really nice candles. Uh, we've talked about this in the past clearly because you can see where I've said, uh, hey everyone, there's a great big bleeding downtrend. The sharks are just beneath the surface, right? That's what tell, that's what that's telling you, the sharks are out there. Uh, here's, the, here's the teeth of the sharks. The teeth of the sharks are showing me uh, downtrend, right? Lower peaks, lower troughs, low, lower peaks. How do you get lower peaks? Supply is pushing down more aggressively on price. How do you get lower troughs? There's always demand in the system, but it's backing away. It's giving away. It's moving back. It's saying, hey, oh, yeah, we'll buy some, but no, no, no. You have to give us lower prices because this thing's so risky. All right? Listen to the market. Um, and I would have said to you right at this hour, I said, what I need to see in this one is a return to higher peaks and higher troughs. Higher troughs, demands coming in on the pullbacks. That's when that's when the big fund managers like to buy. They love to buy pullbacks, okay? They tend to fade to those rallies. They sell a bit, cause a peak, right? And all the short-term traders, day traders start tumbling out. And as they tumble out and get back to the big sharks, the big teeth come out and they swallow up those day traders. They swallow up that supply. And as the troughs rise, it's showing you that the sharks are now starting to come back in. And those peaks get higher and higher because supply is backing away, saying, no, no, no. Yeah, we'll set this up, but we'll only do it at higher and higher prices. Uh, we didn't get what I wanted. We still don't necessarily have what I wanted, but at least we've got some great candles in there. So I still want to see what I want. I still want to see high. I won't draw it again. I've drawn it already. Um, but we have at least got the candles, okay? We still need to deal with this uptrend zone. Now, I can't tell you what to do, Mark. If you want to put one of those quote-unquote quality blue chip household names in your portfolio based upon the evidence that you've seen, that's up to you. But I'm going to say I haven't seen enough evidence yet. What I would say, if you were going to do it, and I'll only type this in and then I'm going to delete it straight away, is plus one third, okay? And the reason why I'm going to delete it straight away is because that's not my view. It's just if you were adamant on adding Amazon, that's how you would do it, okay? Uh, I'm curious now. You've You've, you've piqued my curiosity. Let us head over here and type in AMZN because it is one of those sold names. It's one of the superstars of the tech bull market through 2021 or 2020, 2021. And we have 46 brokers covering. How about that? That's amazing. I don't think 
in these sessions we've ever seen so many brokers covering a particular stock no surprise brokers all over the world cover this one highest target price 160 lowest 90 and the average is 133.64 which allows 33 percent upside from the current price uh, and again probably because the stocks come down so much brokers just haven't downgraded those prices yet they like to keep those prices up they're hoping the stock will rally why will the stock rally because in the long run market goes up and then they won't have to look wrong on those targets so they can be a bit sticky to the upside uh, but still 16 strong buys right you know keeping the faith there 32 buys only four holds and just one sell i can't believe out of 46 brokers doing the research on this company only one saw enough to sell it that is how skewed they tend to be to the buy side because don't forget when we go to our brokers uh we're not saying hey frank um hey what should i sell today i've got all this money what should i sell we're going hey frank i've got some more money what should i buy right so frank gave you a bunch of sells yeah, you know, Mr. Frank Broker. Frank Broker's not going to make any money. Was it Frank? Yeah, hey Frank, what what looks good today? Oh well, I think you should sell these thirteen stocks. Oh, I'm not a seller, Frank. I'm a long term investor. Market will go back up. And then Frank goes, oh, okay, well I've just got thirteen great ideas, and I didn't make any money out of it because he didn't trade. So what is Frank Broker going to tell you? Frank's going to say, hey Frank, what's good today? Oh, I've got thirteen stocks for you to buy. They're all blue chip, and they're in the long term. They'll all be great. Oh great, Frank, let's do some business. So just be a little bit skeptical about that i know i'm being a bit of a cynic aren't i but hey either you believe the big brokers you know the goldman sachs credit suisse jp morgans either you believe they are out there working every day tirelessly in your best interest and when i say you i mean the piss ant on the other end of this presentation i don't mean the big money their big money clients i'm sure they look after them but i'm talking to you do you reckon they're working in your best interest um anyway you decide on that one. EPS. I'm sorry if I called you a piss out. I didn't mean it. <laughs> one. Uh, no, it's not. What's going on there? About minus five cents. I think that would shock a bunch of people, wouldn't it? That Amazon's earnings, which were going really fantastic, all of a sudden, bang, minus five cents. I didn't make this up. It's Thompson Reuters numbers. If it's wrong, don't scream at me. Scream it then. Something went wrong there. I don't know. Inflation. Uh, interest rates going from zero to five percent. Something went wrong. But it looks like we're getting back to the good stuff. US brokers are always ridiculously positive, aren't they? I wish Aussie brokers were as optimistic as US brokers. <laughs> Let's head back to low. And I might have had that stuck on, um, I don't know, maybe I did for Arlo, I can't remember. Uh, but uh, if I did, go back and readjust it yourself, right? Uh, now let's have a look at the target PE here, which is the future PE of 33.6, which is uh, very low. Uh, in by historical standards so I'm, I'm happy with that uh does it justify that uh, eps rate yeah sure it does i could happily no problems if you tell me hey carl this stock's going to grow its uh, earnings by 55 percent compound over the next three years would you pay 33.6 times those earnings i'd say in a fit where do i sign up let me in uh, so my target is not all that dissimilar to this and you know you can massage this and say well i'm going to exercise a degree of skepticism uh on that uh, and it would bring this down a little bit. That's a moderate. And if you've got a high degree of skepticism, then it actually brings it down to where the brokers are. But I'm not here to tell you what the exact setting is because there is no exact setting for fundamental analysis. That's uh, an oxymoron, isn't it? Oh, this is, this is exactly how you should do fundamental analysis. I can tell you this is exactly how you do technical analysis. Okay, how are we going here? AMD from Michael. I looked at this a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? AMD, that's that's clearly not it. Ah, wow, there we go. Look, here, ah, what a great segue. Here I am drawing the shark's teeth again, aren't I? I want to see high peaks and high troughs, and then we can add a third on this. And look what happened. We actually saw high peaks and high troughs adding a third. So look, I know I'm not around. I only do this once a week on Fridays, and we don't always do the same stocks every week. Um, but, you know, pretty happy through here, and even happy here. I know it's starting to get to be a ways away. It's, it is starting to get to be a ways away, and 100 bucks is pretty close. Maybe wait for a pullback because 100 bucks is pretty close. But I don't think you can do too much wrong on that one. Well, now I'm zooming out. <laughs> Certainly the first two I can advocate. Maybe this third one is starting to get a little bit sketchy just on a reward to risk basis. Because if you think about it, you want to put your stop loss at least beneath this POS. Old POS should act as a new POD. The little POS acting as a POD. Little POS acting as a POD. So the stop's going to go somewhere in here. Now we're not so able to make our reward to risk. So let me rescind. 
rescind that last one third. So it's going to be frustrating, I think, for Michael, um, because Michael might not have been as proactive here adding the risk uh, and looking at it tonight saying, should I add some risk tonight? I'm saying, mm, I love everything else, but it's it, it, the setup's great. It's just failing on a reward to risk basis. It's saying you need to get a little bit of a pullback first. Because what the pullback will do potentially is let's say, let's pretend, let's pretend we're over here now. So let's pretend that we're over here. Okay, so if you get a little bit of, so we come up, we get a little bit of a pullback, right? And then we start to go again. <clears throat> what it does is it creates a new pod, a higher pod here that you can set your stop loss at. And it's actually pretty close in terms of where I've drawn it. And what that will do, it'll change, potentially change your reward to risk to make it work. Okay, maybe. Okay, can't see the future. But I like that one. I'm pretty sure we did that a couple of weeks ago in the fundamentals. And just in the interest of time, I might keep moving because I've all of a sudden got a bunch of um, queries down here, Michael. But I've got time, I'll come back to the fundamentals on AMD. But let's have a look at NVDA, which is another one we follow very closely. I've only had positive things to say about this one. And I'm still continue, continuing to be positive. Uh, Perry's asking, is quite unquote, is NVD turning around? I can see it turning around higher, but I can't see it turning around lower. There's nothing in that chart to suggest to me that you need to sell it. In fact, it's it's a straight up buy. Uh, it's, I don't think it's so far away from here that it uh, you're going to have too much trouble with this next point of supply and making the reward to risk there. Well, maybe you will. So, yep, yeah, maybe you will. But if you can, I'll let you do the work on it. But if you can make one-to-one, -one, then I'm, I'm happy here with plus one-third. But if you follow... Um, our, our workings on this, uh, we, we've had plus one thirds all along the way here. Um, it looks magic. So really happy with that one. We have done the fundamentals on this very recently, so I won't do it again. Check um, the previous recordings on YouTube. Uh, thanks from Jimmy. Was thinking of an early turnaround play. Um, which one was that, Jimmy? That was on DCFC. Not yet. Not yet. I Look, hey, you never know. You know what to look for. That's the thing. That's half the battle, right? Is you come into these sessions, I, I think, I don't know, maybe you do come into these sessions, wondering what the hell do I do? <laughs> you know, hopefully you leave them going, I know exactly what to do. That's brilliant. That gives me goosebumps. I just got a I just got goosebumps. It's like, ah, hopefully I'm part of the part of the puzzle for you. Right. S B U X. If I've done that, I've done my job. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Uh, we haven't been very happy with this, have we? We've been talking about supply side, minus one thirds and things like that. Um, is that turning around? Look, I think these two candles are very good. I'm very happy with that, and I'm very happy with that. But do I need to remind you about this one, everyone? I think it's still too early, all right? And we're in this situation here, okay? I think I'm, I think I'm just going to keep this queued up from now on in all of, in all of our sessions. <laughs> so I think if we, if we go there, um, we risk not seeing what's coming up under the surface. But let's wait then just, just wait a little bit more let's see if we get a little bit of a you know move like that uh, with some more white candles in here showing us that 100 has gone from supply to, to demand and even then i could uh, happily entertain the idea on this of going plus one third but it needs to just do a little bit more work for me okay because that short-term trend is pretty well established to the downside uh, let us do, we have done the fundamentals on that very recently, I'm sure. So I'm going to keep moving. S-K-Y-T. Uh, this is one we looked at and we said looked great a couple of weeks ago, I reckon. Uh, it hasn't done the job and it has been uh, fallen foul of the, the market conditions. Uh, is it a hold? No, I think we're losing the grip on the hold, unfortunately. And yeah, look, I mean, it's okay until we get beneath whatever that low is there, so... What is that low? That low there, if I hover over it and go 13, 13. So close beneath 13, 13. It's starting to be in a bit of trouble here. Uh, and you probably had some signals before that, not the least being, and I can't remember where we covered it um, through here. And look, I think maybe I even said, look at this, look at this little shark tooth there. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. Maybe we covered it on this day here. And we said, just wait for a little dink down. You know, just a little dink down, too far away from the from the green zone. Perhaps I said, I don't know. Go check the recording. Maybe wait for a pullback. Didn't really get the pullback, did we? This candle kind of ruins it. Yeah. So this one here is your your. I'm not interested anymore. This is this is your breakup candle here. Yeah, it's too big. 
even even if you get the bounce from there, this is too much supply. Okay, and you may not have known that before I just said it, but you know, you, you know that my my message is very 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 consistent. Watch out for those big black candles. They they're the sharks, aren't they? They are the sharks. Uh, so yeah, hold grip on hold becoming more tenuous. Um, I don't think it's a sell, but I, I, it's certainly not a buy for me. Uh, let's go to Hanelli. Hi, Carl. If I may, I have Microsoft and Nike. Do I still hold? Let's have a look. MSFT. Yes. Look at that. That's magic. That's wonderful. Oh, what have we been looking at in the past? Demand side buddies. At least I'm consistent. Um, this candle, not that important. No, look, it's good, but could have been better. Now, this candle here, that's the good one. Uh, and look, I, even, I said, look, you need to see those candles in that zone. <laughs> and there it is. And there's another one. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, plus one third. Plus one third. And oh, I'm pretty happy with this even. Plus one third. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Hanelli. It's up to you, of course. Everything we do in these sessions is general advice. You have to make your own decision, but it looks good to me. And the other one is Nike. Let's have a look at Nike. I shouldn't say Nike. Uh, looks good too in terms of its holding. I think we've seen minus one thirds in the past. Okay, so potentially managing some risk. Is it time to add risk back? I'm going to say ditto what I said on Starbucks. We've got some great candles coming in. In fact, this is this candle's far better even than the Starbucks one. Certainly, I can get to a hold. 100% hold, no issue. No question about holding. What we've also got is a great line in the sand. And I would say beneath here, so if you crack this level, you have got the clearest, clearest, most obvious line of the sand. I think I even drew it. There you go. I drew it in the past uh, for minus a third. So if you permit me, I will take the old uh, minus a third and just move that over here. Okay. If you get beneath there, I think we can get rid of this one now. If you get beneath that, um, that low and that low there is 115.79. So close beneath that and we minus a third. Until then, 100% as a hold. And we're just now waiting for the right signals to upgrade to a buy. Okay. And you know what those signals are. Okay. We can move some of these around. But simplicity, copy that. And if we see that, that's where that becomes the case. Okay. Uh, let us do NSIT. We have done the fundamentals on Nike recently. Again, that's why I didn't do that one. Amazing insight. Uh, happy to add some risk here. Plus one third, no questions at all. It's the most amazing chart. Again, some people look at that and say, Carl, I can't buy that. It's gone up too much. As soon as I buy it, Carl, it's gone. Carl, listen, Carl, did you know that actually my webcam at home on my laptop, Carl, when I'm doing my trading, it switches on, the little blue light goes on, and there's a feed. The uh, managing director of the NYSE, Carl, he's monitoring every time I trade. And I tell you what, Carl, this is, this, this happens. It happens every time. As soon as I get into a stock, he rings the bell at the NYSE. Like ding, 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 ding. And all the floor traders start selling my stock, Carl. You, you wouldn't believe it. It happens every time. I, it's really starting to get me down, actually. And I don't know why he does that, but every time I buy, he starts selling. And then when I get so frustrated that I just bought in at the top and in disgust, I sell at the bottom, he rings the bell again, ding, 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 ding. And all those same floor traders start to buy back that stock. It's, it's, it's really getting me down. Somebody should do something about that guy. Uh, it's not the case, everyone. Okay. It's not the case. Don't look at a chart like that and say, as soon as I buy it, it must go down. I would suggest to you that whoever's buying this loves it. They just can't get enough of it. And the people who own it already, they don't want to sell it. That's why the people who want to buy it have to keep offering them higher and a gill. Hey, we want some. We want some. I'll give you 100, 120 for it. I'll give you a little bit, just a little bit. Where's the supply in there? I'll give you a little bit at 120. Oh, let me pay 125. Oh, I'll give you a little bit. Oh, I'll pay 135. Oh, I'll give you a little bit. <laughs> like, where's the big supply going to come out? And it could come out tomorrow, right? Ding, 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 ding. I don't know. But that's a picture of strength to me. I can't fault it. Let's see what the brokers think about it. It's one that we might consider buying. Let's head over to the fundamentals. I like that way of thinking. Find a chart you like and then go and check up on the fundamentals, not the other way around. Okay, it will take you too long. Otherwise, charts, you go tick, 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 tick. Get down a big watch list real quick, right? And then you're doing the extra work of looking at the fundamentals, not the other way around. Don't have a lot of brokers covering it, unfortunately. 
So we're going to have to take everything we see with a pinch of salt. We don't have a lot of forward-looking numbers either. Okay, we can do a bit of analysis. I'll probably leave that at high just in case because we don't have a lot of analysis there. The PE is very, very low. Okay, and I hope, which is, I haven't been changing that, have I? I hope these all matched up with December 23. I need to remind myself for the um, US stocks. So apologies if they haven't. Um, I'll review the uh, recording and I'll uh, rectify that next week. But just the way the spreadsheet works, it doesn't always match up here. And I need these two to match up. Hopefully they have. I haven't been paying attention. Uh, next week, when we're doing this, hey, say, hey, Carl, change that cell. Just type it in there. Hey, Carl, change that cell. Okay, we've got uh, the two strong buys, three holds, uh, average price target plus 6%. EPS line looks very good. You know, bottom left, top right, through pandemics, supply chain shortages and rising uh, inflation and expected to continue 13%. Very healthy growth rate. I'd, I'd be more than happy, more than happy to pay 13 times. I think that's a really low PE for that growth rate. And historically, it's a very low PE. So I, 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 I would say this is cheap. Again, it just comes down to your risk level. If I change that to low, yeah, it's looking really cheap. But even at a high risk level, it's saying that we're about fair value. So I think there's some upside in this one. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Let us uh, finish. We're going to do one more here. Uh, from Actually, I haven't looked at the streamers. Sorry, streamers. Uh, Google and SWK. Let's do that. Let's finish off with these two. Google, which I know is going to command some interest out there. G-O-O-G. A bit like Amazon, isn't it? It's showing the early signs that it wants to turn around. I look. I reckon. I reckon we've seen the low on this. I reckon there's enough in there to say we've seen the low. But having said that, I'm not going to buy it just yet. I st still need to see a little bit more before I can dip a toe in the water. I won't show you the shark video again, okay? Because I think around here, uh, a few people probably jumped in more than just a toe, and it got bitten off. Okay, but we are seeing through here high peaks and troughs. We're seeing some great candles coming in and we are seeing the challenging of that long-term downtrend. And it is that long-term downtrend that we'll need to change. If you don't believe me, let's go back to the last time uh, Google was facing these sorts of issues. And we have to go back a long way. Oh, we have to go back a really long way. In fact, I can't even go back far enough. It's never had a, a long-term downtrend. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, well, there you go. I was going to try and show you, but I think we can say that it needs to deal with the zone and get above the zone. And once it starts to print greens, wow. Oh, apart from now, of course, but we haven't seen it. Had, okay, this is the first long-term downtrend for Google. How about that? I can't believe it. Mind-blowing. But it's never had to go through that scenario of being in a downtrend turning up. Well, uh, it'll do it like all the other ones did it. Um, so let's see. Long story short. Great candles, sure. Give me a high trough again. Give me a little hook here. Um, give me the right candles again, and I'm happily going to go plus one-third on this one. Okay, I think we're very close, but I just have to be a little bit cautious given that option for him to say, well, we're not quite not quite there yet. Okay, but that's in the offing. That's a, that's a possibility in the very near future. Okay, uh, let us quickly head over here. I've only got one more to do, so stop typing in new ones. We're going to finish at the next one, which is SWK. And I'm very curious to see how Google is doing. I'm going to have plenty of... Plenty of I was going to say, we have plenty of brokers. That's got to be broken, surely. Nine brokers. That's just weird. If you if, if I've done something wrong, let me know. But I don't think so. Let's take it on face value. 23% upside of the 135 high and 119 low. Six buys, six strong buys. So unanimous there by Google from the brokers. Bottom left, top right earnings until last year, where we saw a bit of a dip, a bit like Amazon. Uh, but then expected to move back to some great growth, 18%. I don't think we need to use high here because nine brokers and Google is so like, you know, closely covered. I think we can go low, low, low risk of this being rubbish, right? Uh, but that is something you can, you know, manipulate yourself. Well, you can't. It's on my spreadsheet, but it's theory, you could. Uh, the PE of 15 is extremely low, I think, for Google historically. And I think fairly reasonable, a fairly reasonable uh, hurdle rate to hold it to account and therefore I have no reason to doubt this look I think it looks pretty cheap here if all of that growth turns out to be the case there's certainly no red flags preventing me from buying Google at this stage and then the final one we'll, get, we'll do today is SWK which I actually think looks far better than Google and this is one of the, the better charts I've actually seen today it's still very much a turnaround play okay it's not bottom left top right 
uh, like Hershey. It doesn't have that big, long, uh, dark green uptrend ribbon, but it is turning the ribbon. And it's doing many of the things that your Google and your Amazons have to do. And that is we have to get above that long-term trend. We have to deal with it. We have to hold it. We have to spend some time, you know, just getting to know it. So how are you going, long-term trend? Yeah, I'm going pretty good. All right, well, why don't we just, you know, why don't we just hang around for a little while, make sure I'm comfortable, right? And then, you know, let's go on a bit of a journey together after that. And I think it's doing it. I think last few candles are cementing that. And if this is highly specky, but I'm, I look, I'm happy. I'm happy to go, look, last night's candle was pretty good. You might want to wait for a close above that. Uh, but we have a little little move here, a little higher peak, higher trough move. This next peak will be higher than that one. That trough is already higher than that. We get a nice tight stop in here. I'm going to do this. It's highly speculative. But this is why we only do that. We say, hey, you know what? Is it the best chart on the market right now? No, it's not. But that's okay because I'm only going to dip a toe in the water. Okay? I'm not going to just go head first. She was about to go head first into the mouth of the shark. If I have a mishap, if the market has a mishap, what have I lost? I've lost a toe. It's not the end of the world. Uh, let us quickly finish today's presentation with a look at the fundamentals for SWK. Uh, SWK, uh, which is not Stanley. Okay, I've, I've done the wrong chart. <laughs> SWK. So we wanted Stanley Black & Decker. What I've done is given you Skyworks Solutions. So DE on the uh, stream hasn't said anything because I think DE was just happy to see me talk about Skyworks, uh, which actually looks pretty good. So that, that was Skyworks. I don't know if you catch that, but um, DE wanted SWK, and which is that one there, Stanley Black & Decker. Now, this is good for you, DE, on the YouTube stream. I wouldn't touch that with a barge pole. There's no reason to, to buy that, okay? So, but what I've done for you, I've shown you something else, which actually looks really good uh, and that I think you can buy. So let us go here and let us not do Stanley Black & Decker because I'm not interested in buying that one yet. And I think, DE, if you've been watching me long enough, you know what I need to see to, to, for that to occur. Uh, but let's head over here, Skyworks. Oh, I'm happy to add some risk on the chart. Well, what, is, what do the fundamentals say? Uh, we've got 25 brokers, 188 high, 99 low, 9% upside, not terrible. Uh, one strong buy, 17 buys, very much skewed to the, the long side there, one sell. Uh, EPS line is not great. You know, through the pandemic, it did suffer, but seems to be bouncing back really well, but then lumpy. So we, we don't have fantastic, uh, fantastic numbers here, and we do have to go there. Um, 12% earnings per share growth compound is not awful, I guess, from the current. Uh, well, the current FY, isn't it? Because of the dip. That dip makes that look a bit better. Hmm. Anyway, if I do nothing, it says don't disagree with the brokers. So I'm not going to disagree with the brokers. But yeah, a little bit of a dip there. Uh, so not going to disagree. There's nothing in there to prevent me from buying Skyworks at this stage. Okay, let's head back over here and say, hey, we do more than this. Uh, each week, of course, we do our ASX edition on Tuesdays. Same stuff, charts and analysis, but on Aussie stocks. And then on Thursdays at 1 p.m. So 1 p.m. on Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Thursdays, we do all the macro stuff so you can learn how to trade uh, commodities, indices, uh, cryptocurrencies, and Forex. Register at www.thinkmarkets.com forward slash au forward slash webinar. If you're not a client of Think Markets, well, you really, really should be because we are the good guys in the broking, Australian broking space. But we have the ability for you to trade US shares via our CFD product as well. And that will be commission free, as you'll see on the next screen. But you can also trade any of that macro stuff from the same account. So what's great about Think Markets is you've got your super fund in an account over here doing its thing, uh, trading just normal Aussie shares. And then you've got this uh, great trading account over here where you can take advantage of many of the stuff we talk about in live market analysis. We are an award-winning broker. We keep winning them. We keep getting nominated for them because we have the best platforms and most importantly, the best customer support. Head to www.thinkmarkets.com forward slash au to open an account right now. The other thing to do right now is to hit, hit the subscribe button on any of the platforms you're watching me on any of those streams. And very important, hit the like button. Let me know you like what I'm doing so I can continue to do more of it. Apart from that, it has been a pleasure chatting today. All the best for your trading and investing until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now.
But before you go, you know the drill. It's the disclaimer. The bit everybody hangs around for. Everything we talked about today is general in nature. Has not taken into account your personal financial circumstances or particular needs. So before acting upon any of this general advice, please consider it carefully or seek the help of a financial professional. <laughs> you can learn more about Think Markets and our products by downloading our PDS, our product disclosure statement from our website.